national behaviors in value structure in the social system political system economic system everything was changed you will have to make a research to find something that remained as it was people who were illiterate nobody very few people could read and write and that was converted to a nation who became in the field of knowledge pioneers and inventors of new disciplines people who used to keep fighting 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 and they become so peaceful so disciplined obeying a leader so it was the most profound revolution of human history and here i want to give you some witnesses to that number 1 brother rogers might appreciate it m n roy a bengali hindu a communist and he was the member of the communist international holding a high position he delivered a lecture here in lahore in 1920 in bradla hall in which he said that the greatest revolution of human history was brought about by muhammad this lecture of his is still published in india mumbai under the title historical role of islam m n roy i gave the testimony of hg wells that it was muhammad who for the first time in history established a society based on the principles of human equality fraternity and freedom and lastly i gave you another testimony from dr michael hart the author of the 100 it was published i think in 1978 from manhattan and he gives the subtitle of his book a selection and gradation of the 100 most influential personalities of human history first he selected 100 names who had changed the course of history and then he gave a gradation who was the maximum one who changed the this brought about the maximum change and then number 2 and number 3 and number 4 and he puts muhammad on top and he says i am a christian and i have put muhammad on top so naturally i owe an explanation i have done this because he is the only person please note the only person supremely successful in both the religious and secular fields i told you three things go to make religion some beliefs some modes of worship some social customs here also he was extremely successful and with political socio economic order changing the direction he was extremely successful and he is the only person all the others are if they have greatness on this side they might be zero on the other and if they have some greatness on the other side they are zero here gautam buddh and jesus christ himself occupy very high position in religion but what about politics what about the social system it remained as it was same is true of buddha but muhammad brought about the most profound revolution my third point is i have derived the process of a true revolution from the biography or life of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and i think i have the right to do it because he brought about the biggest revolution to compare with other revolutions french revolution was limited to political change bolshevik revolution limited to 
economic change. And here, it was all embracing. Number two, in the French Revolution, the ideology was given by Rousseau and so on, the writers, the intellectuals. But they couldn't bring about a revolution even in a village. They were not leaders of the revolution. Revolution was brought about by some other people. Rowdy and maximum bloodshed, bloody revolution. In the same case, the communist ideology was given by Marx and his angels. They lived in Germany, they lived in England, but both the countries had never had any communist revolution. The revolution was brought about by the Bolsheviks and the Bolsheviks as far away in Russia. While Muhammad started the movement, the Dawa presented the ideology, propagated it, organized the people who accepted it, and then passing through all stages of revolution, even armed conflict, he completed the revolution himself, and at every step he was the leader. He was a sweet preacher, like Jesus in Makkah. But he was leading the armies when he was at Madinah. The same person, having both these things in his life. Now I want to explain those six steps that I have derived from the life of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But I want to describe them in the beginning in secular terminology. Extracted from the life of Muhammad, but I will not use the religious terminology, but the secular one. Number one, the first prerequisite of a revolution is that there should be some revolutionary ideology. First prerequisite. This ideology should be such that it cuts at the roots of the political economic system. If it doesn't cut at the roots of the social order, of the political socio-economic system, then it's a sermon. It's something religious, moral, not nothing else. The revolutionary ideology is the one which cuts at the roots of the existing political socio-economic system. Now this ideology either and better should be new so that people can take it at the face value. But if it is an old ideology, then it has to be reinterpreted in the idiom of the time so that the people, intelligentsia of that time can understand. Now the first step is to propagate this ideology by all the means available. Now coming to the second step. The second step would be, and essentially is, to organize the people who have accepted this revolutionary ideology into a disciplined party. This party